Hello, everyone. Welcome to Saturday Crafter Noons. I'm your host, Samir. Today we have a very special guest. Today's guest is Brianna Mims. Hello, Brianna. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Glad that it's the weekend, finally. Yeah, it's always nice to have the weekend to look forward to. <laughs> um, so I have a couple questions for you before we jump into your little workshop. Um, my first question is, where is your favorite restaurant to eat in Pittsburgh? So my favorite place to eat in Pittsburgh is probably Changdu Gourmet, which I think is in Squirrel Hill. Oh, such a good restaurant. Oh man, do you have a um, favorite thing on the menu? Whenever I order from there, I either will order a General Tso's or I'll convince somebody that I'm with to get it so that I can have some of theirs and still have something else. <laughs> yeah, General Tso's is such a classic. I also really like uh, ordering, like I order a dish and like I have my friends order a dish and then we all just have a like, family style and take them each other to try everything. So that's my favorite way to do takeout or eating in, but takeout, it's takeout season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had one other question. Um, where's, what, where's your COVID getaway? Where's your like spot to go to get away from everyone, which I guess you're supposed to be away from <laughs> most people in the first place, but just like, you know, your spot. Um, a place that was sort of unexpected but has come to be somewhere that I like to go to get away is the fountain that's across from the Allegheny Hospital. Um, I think that's in Northside. Um, it's just really peaceful and like, I don't know, I like people watching from a distance. <laughs> yeah, that's a really beautiful, that, is that the area with the park? Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't know if it's every single week, but they've also got little shops where people can buy like produce and like handmade jewelry and composting worms. There's also a great little um, dog park around. It's a, it's a good time. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for talking with me. Um, yeah, let's jump into your lesson. Let's check out what we got going on. Hello to my Assemble community. So today I wanted to focus on making from a place of feeling and from our personal experiences, um, which I think is really important, especially times like right now, you know, there might be things happening that make you feel sad or things that make you feel happy or things that make you feel angry. Um, and sometimes there's really no way to keep track and we just go through every single day not really thinking about how we feel um and i think that's why art is so important because it's sort of like this documentation of a period in time of where your head was at um you know so whether you like to sing or to dance or to knit or draw or paint or to code or whatever it is that you like to do you know, it's important to allow those things to be an outlet um, and really to be able to express yourself. So for today, um, what I'm going to do is basically we're going to start with a little bit of a casual kind of meditation for one minute. Um, and then I'm going to go over some of the materials and whatnot that I'm using, um, the colors that I'm going to use, the textures, the shapes, the materials. And also I'm going to make a bit of a map to sort of say, okay, well, this color, like hot pink, you know, makes me feel happy and whatever. Um, so. I'll make that map and show that to you guys so that you guys might think, hey, that color makes me happy too. Or no, that color makes me, ew, I don't like that color, whatever it might be. Um, so that you guys can sort of get an idea. And it's also nice because, you know, especially when you're working at Assemble, you have almost feels like the entire world at your fingertips of what you can make. Um, and sometimes that can be really overwhelming. So it's nice to just pick a few things, make sort of a map or a key out of them so you know what you have to work with, what they look like, and then you pick and choose what you want, what feels right in that moment, um, and to make that bigger piece. So like I said, I'll show you guys that map. I'll also demo how to do any techniques that are on that map. Um, and you know, the way that all of those colors, textures and so on make me feel. And then after that, I will go into making the piece that I'm gonna make. 
um, which I don't even know what that is yet. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I would like you guys to do is to just take your two fingers and put them right underneath your jawline um, until you can find your heartbeat. So you might have to go up a little bit or down a little bit, but you should be able to feel your heart rate. And a nice little trick that I like to do if I'm a little excited or upset or angry is to really tune in to my heartbeat and figure out what is every four beats. So let's see. So that is the pulse that I will start my breathing on. So every four, so intaking for four, exhaling for four, inhaling for four. And you're gonna keep going with that pattern just until your breath starts to slow down. Or if that's not comfortable, you can just try and do some deep breathing. But I think this minute is gonna be really important for if we don't know how we feel. If we're not sure, if we haven't been paying a lot of attention or we've been watching a bunch of stuff or consuming things, sometimes we forget about what we feel on the inside because we're so busy focused on things outside. So, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is if you want to try my little trick of breathing on every four uh, heartbeats, we can do that. Or you can just do a nice deep breathing. I ask that you'll take a nice slow inhale through your nose and a nice deep exhale through your mouth. Um, and you're going to want to make your mouth kind of like you're either blowing a whistle or drinking out of a straw, something like that, so that you can help slow that breath down. And it's going to help nice and mellow you out. This is my third time doing this video right now, so I feel really calm. <laughs> um, but so what I'm going to ask you guys to do is to go ahead and close your eyes. Um, and I'm just going to say th some things that will try and help you get into a space to understand where it is that you're coming from, how you're feeling, so we can put that into the artwork. So again, I'm going to have you close your eyes if you want to pick the four heartbeat breathing method or you want to just do some nice deep breathing let's go ahead and start that with our eyes closed so we can just think about you know what maybe happened this week that you know was maybe upsetting or a little bit frustrating or you know whatever the case may be think of you know something that made you feel strongly this week or yesterday or today um, and just sort of sit with that for a little bit. Um, don't let it re-upset you. Just kind of think about it from a distance. Why was it that you were so upset? Maybe what was it that made you upset? And, you know, maybe start associating those feelings with some colors or some textures. Is the way that you feel kind of rough and itchy or scratchy? Or is it nice and soft and, you know, cozy? like my little dog Romeo. Just try and think about how those emotions sort of align with colors or textures or materials. And then let's take some time to also think about the things that made us happy this week, the things that made us excited, that made us wanna jump up and down or you know, call a friend, whatever it might be. Um, think of those happy feelings and what colors you think of when you think of those feelings. Um, and just, yeah, just keep up with that deep breathing. The last thing that I will say before I jump into the actual materials is just to grab yourself a drink of some sort. I've got some Earl Grey tea with some local honey in here and I've got uh, just my water bottle over here. Grab yourself a nice little cup of something and let's get into the video. So first we're gonna get started with some color. So I have got here, I've got some soft pastels, um, some watercolor, got some watercolor pencils, some more pastels I think these are, more pastels. And more oil pastels. <laughs> um, so basically what I'm just going to do is start looking at this stuff, thinking about how I feel, and just getting an idea for what it is that I want to make. When we did our little breather exercise, I felt pretty calm. I felt excited to be working with you guys. So this color feels like excited to me. 
That's how I feel happy. What is this song? I think this feels like happy excitement to me. Orange feels happy too. And this feels calm. I like that one too. Um, ooh, I like this one too. <laughs> I have a little rainbow going on here. So let's just get these swatched down. I think this, this color to me feels like confidence. And then this is a color that I said feels like excitement. It's nice and bright, colorful. And this color is the color I said feels like calm and kind of exciting also. This color just feels like calm to me. Then we've got the green, which is like, whoa, that's happy, excited. And we've got this orange here. It's nice and warm. It feels like a nice, warm, happy summer day. Then I've got my yellow here. Let's dip that into some water and start getting these watercolors activated. I just like to dip my brush in and just add a few drops to each thing just to get it nice and started. You only have to add it to the colors you know you're going to use. Sometimes if those colors are associated with feelings or, you know, just what your favorite colors are. Sometimes it changes. So now I think my paint should be ready. So again, I'm just going to start doing some swatching. And with watercolors, to I think it's easiest to start with your lightest color. So for me, this feels pretty happy. It's kind of like not electric yellow, but it's a nice pretty yellow color. It's really easy to muddy up all of your paints if you're doing darker colors and then lighter colors. Sometimes there's some paint left in the brush that you didn't know about. And also I should mention, we're probably gonna have different materials from each other. So for me, I think I'm just gonna go and knock out all these colors because it's just so darn pretty. Why not? Well, play jazz music. Sure, here's a Spotify playlist called Jazz for Sleep. No. <laughs> So while I'm doing this, I really encourage you guys to make your own. So what you're going to do is you'll set out all the materials that, you know, come in your kit, maybe some extra materials you might already have at home. Oh, even look at the water. The water is making a really pretty color. And this way, when I'm in the middle of my piece, instead of making something that I don't necessarily like and not being able to go back, I can say, okay, well, this so this sky blue color, if I'm like, oh, I think I want to put this on my piece, but I don't quite know what it looks like, I can look back here and say, oh, I can look this, this looks nice. Or I can even go in and try and see what happens when I start manipulating the, the color. You know, this texture and that texture are not the same. But yeah, so you're just gonna go and sample all the materials. In a little bit, I'm also gonna show you guys some stuff that I started working on off camera to give you guys also some ideas of how to start combining your materials. So also, just a little bit of information. If you're trying to color in something and you feel like there's too much white space, you want a little bit more, um, a little more coverage, especially if you're working with a textured paper, it's gonna be more difficult to get into those cracks and crevices in the picture. From up here, it might look like it's more kind of covered in. Oops, I got something. That's what we call an incidental mark. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take a picture of this so you guys can see that as well, but it might be kind of difficult to get the paper to be completely saturated with color, if that's what you want. So what I like to do is I will draw circles, kind of like making a loop set circle in on themselves. Now, from the last picture, you'll be able to see a bit of a difference. So what I'm going to do is, because it's a watercolor pencil, I'm going to go in and do the rest of my swatches. Wow. See, this is why I really love watercolor pencils, because you can do some really fun things and still have, so like, this is also another way to really get the white covered up, is to use something that is water mixable. But yeah, so now I know what those look like. So now I'll go into some of the textures that I've got going on. So here, I've got some wood chips. For me, this feels like calm, you know? Then I've also got some more wood pieces here. I was very happy when I found them at a sample. I've also got myself plenty, plenty, plenty of plaster paper um so that will once we dip it in water it'll get hardened but the texture is fun and playful you know we've got this uh kind of oh, there we go. you can see that texture it feels fun and i've also got some tin foil that we can use you should have the plaster some tin foil um maybe some paint um bottle caps um some wooden sticks also got these here and also feel free to look around your house and find anything that you know works for you also got some paper here and I don't know if these are going to be in your kit, but this is a good example of like things that you can just bring from your house. If, you know, your parents just got some packages in the mail, maybe they have some of these guys. Um, or maybe if you like to craft at home, you've got some of these little pom-pom guys. This one here. 
to do this one too. Um, if this one can actually just move. Let's give it this yellow. And I think I'm going to use these. Definitely going to use the plaster. Um, and the aluminum, I think so too. Yeah, and I think that's good to get started. So as you guys can see here, I've got my color swatches and I've narrowed down quite a bit the materials that I want to use. So what I'm going to do here is just show you guys a couple of ways that you can use some of these materials. Um, I'm going to start with the tin foil. So what I did to work with the tin foil is I just sort of got a decent sized piece. I like to get a little bit more texture going on. I like it to be nice and tightly packed with all the nooks and crannies. It makes it a little bit harder to start to unravel it, being careful to not rip it too much. Because what we want to do is try and make strips out of this. And I'm just going to start Thing with tin foil. So pick what side you want to face up and then you're going to flip it over and we're just going to put some glue on the back. It's also helpful if you use a brush to glue these down. So I'm just going to take my brush and start dabbing the glue onto all those nooks and crannies and you want to make sure to get the edges just so that because the tin foil has a texture that we like and want to keep, what we'll do is just push it gently down until it's no longer coming back up when you try and take your fingers off of it. And also you can play with what it looks like to try and get rid of some of the texture, but not all of it. So like on this bottom part, that looks way different. It's not nice and hard, but not hard enough to mess up the tinfoil texture. So you probably can't see the difference from where you guys are at, so I'm gonna take a picture. But one of them I just pressed down harder, that top one I pressed down harder, and the like, little one not so thin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest of these, and then we'll be going towards the tail. So now we've got a two foil in here, nice and shiny, and it's on the paper. I should also mention, this doesn't have to always just be about how you feel in the moment. Sometimes you can pick colors and use materials to try and make you feel differently than how you feel. So if you feel sad, maybe working with some tinfoil might, you know, brighten up your day a little bit. So again, we're going to take our glue. So you could leave this just like that and maybe, you know, put some of your colors on it. Depending on what like materials you're working with, whether it's markers or crayons, some things are going to be easier than others to do this way. But it's okay, just give it a try if you want to put color on something else. I mean, I could also come in here and say, well, what does this do if I put color on here? You know, it could be something nice that you didn't expect. <laughs> what I really like to use these plaster strips for is to put them on top of the wood. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, actually, that works perfect. So wood that you would know use these, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump back in and let the excess water drip off a little bit. And then I'll put that right down on top of my wood blocks. So then if you really want, if you're putting something underneath these and you really want the texture to pop, you'll just go in, oops, I'm blocking. You'll just go in and so like the bottom of my eye is right here. So I'm just gonna go in with my nail or you can even go in with a brush if you wanted to be nice and crisp and just press down. So that way you can see the form that you put underneath. If you don't really like the holes that are in the plaster strips, after you've let it and you place it where you want it to go, you can start smoothing it down. Because right now the plaster is wet, so you can sort of move it around. So now we've got 
those little windows in there so we can see our color lines. So you can kind of see here, there's the um, yellow is underneath here, that's my magenta color. And then I've got that blue one in the center. And then here you can see I put the blue um, pastels on the aluminum foil and the yellow here. Last technique that I want to show, I'm going to take and I'm going to just paint the entire lid all the way. So this is kind of like, I think they're called agates. I'm kind of like a crystal in your own little bottle cap. So this is something that, you know, if you've got a recycling bin in your home, you can just go and grab that and pick whatever color you want. I think I'm going to do green glitter. But I'm just going to take my glitter, also take a piece of paper, so that way you can clean up easy after, and I'm just going to start putting, start putting my glitter inside the cap. That should be enough. So then I'm going to just run the glitter around until it's completely covering every single edge. And it's okay if some spills out. That's what we got the paper for. And also, if you want to have the rim have a glitter on it too, so that's not showing, you can just use that paper again. And so then <laughs> you've got this nice little glitter thing. And then the cap there. So but you can use these techniques in any way that you want. You can change up a little bit. You could add some new materials. You can see here, this is the model magic thing that I was telling you about. So what I did is I took the model magic and I stretched out like I was making pizza. And then I was able to get this shape that you see. And then I just poured glitter on top of it. And because the model magic was still fresh out of the package, most of the glitter stuck. This blue glitter here, I did have to put some glue on the outer rim of the um, surface just to get that to stick so it's not coming off. Or as you can see here, when I touch the model magic, that comes off a little bit easier. So if you really want this to stay, or you're gonna be really good and not touch it, which obviously I am not. <laughs> um, you don't have to use glue, but glue will make sure that it's not coming off like here. I can, that nothing's coming from there. But then I touch this, and you can see all that glitter falling. The reason I didn't use glue in the center is because I didn't want to get any glitter in these spots. So if you want yours to look put something like this, I would suggest trying to avoid, and but you want to use glue, I would try to avoid getting it in these spots. Um, maybe just work in small sections with the glitter. So just do a little bit of glue and then put your glitter and move from section to section. It really depends. Some other experiments that I was working on. So here you can see, these are my glitter caps. So it's almost like its own little crystal. So I've got pink, got a blue one, and it is gold. And then also, this is something similar to what I was showing you guys before. Um, this is the plaster strips again with the wood pieces. So I just push that down in the center since it's hard now. It's all dried up. Um, and then this here, what I did was I just put down some glue and I took some glitter and I put that down there. And then this is the same technique I showed you guys here with the tin foil. Um, and I just cut those into strips and glued those down. But um, what you guys actually can see that I didn't get to see is what it looks like once I take the tape off. So this can be really nice if you want to get specific shapes with your glitter. I just put some tape down before I put the glue down and I kept it on while I put the glitter on. So now I got a fairly neat square. And my ideas for that were to take some paper. So then what I'm going to do is try and measure up my paper to something similar to this size. So it's about like right here. I'm just going to take the scissors and cut my paper to about the right size that I wanted. And then I'm going to pick, so if, so what I'm going to try and do is make a cutout on here, sort of like um, a Christmas snowflake or something. And then I fold. So now when I unfold it, I've got this. So then I could just also if you have scrap paper you know you're not going to use, it's a really great place to clean your brush. That is nice and glued up, nice and sticky, can stick into my fingers. And I'm just going to try and line that up in the center best I can. And as you can see, then you've got this nice little
Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this Saturday Crafternoon with me. I had such a fun time making this video for you guys and working on this project. And for those of you that made it to the very end of this video, I wanted to add in a special little surprise. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Saturday Crafternoon. We would love to see what you've created. To do so, please share by posting on our Facebook page, tagging us on Instagram at assemblepgh, or email me at my email, leah at assemblepgh.org. And if you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.